Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to day six of our daily creative challenge. Oh my gosh, time be flying too fast. If you are joining in the chat on Behance, go ahead and give me a shout out. I want to say hello to you, Austin. Hello to you, Oleg, Claire Louise, Jennifer, Darius, Sam. Good to see you all. Uh, if you don't know, I'm Kathleen. I'm your host with the most for this daily creative challenge. And you can see my name right there. And you can also see shiny new app mnemonic over there Ooh, brand new lower third so exciting what's up talon good to see you hey congrats on the new xd updates talon i heard they were mind-blowing i think howard just blew everyone's mind with that uh overview right before me happy tuesday yes so let's just jump into it super duper quick this is the daily creative challenge and we are on week two so if you are new to the Daily Creative Challenge, hop on over to this landing page to learn more about it. It's behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. You can see it right there. Boom. And this is where you can find your challenges every single day. So look at all of these awesome challenges that we have completed so far. And today we're gonna do a crowd favorite. Yes, we're jumping into the world of photography but we're making it crazy with double exposures. So we're gonna be merging multiple photos together to create a double exposure. And we're gonna use some layer masks. We're gonna, we're gonna use some blend modes. This is all stuff that we've touched on on previous challenges. So I think you're totally capable of it. Uh, and there's a couple different ways to really level up your double exposures, I would say. So there's some really simple ways. I'll show you one simple way. And then there's a more advanced way. Uh, they're both cool. So do, do what you like. But before I jump in, I will introduce you to Discord and my neighbor is hammering on his roof again. I love it. I love it when they get started right at 9 a.m. Somebody's gotta work hard around here. All right, so if you wanna join us on Discord, the link is bit.ly slash PS Discord, and it's just a giant party. When the stream is not going, Discord is still bumping. So I will open it up on my desktop and show you what's going on. Uh, if you come to the current challenge tab in the feedback group, you can upload your work to get feedback. So we have some really, really cool digital collages from yesterday. This is awesome by Paul. The whole theme was kind of like a telescope, astrological, digital collage vibes yesterday using smart shapes. So here's a really cool composite, including a workstation, or as I like to call it, a battle station, uh, looking at some sweet celestial air balloons. Love that. Are they hot air balloons if they're in space? Or are they just lack of air balloons? Hmm. Asking the real hard questions <laughs> this morning. <laughs> Uh, Cynthia says, I don't know how to participate in the daily challenge. You're doing it right now. You are here. I'm about to jump into Photoshop and show you how I'm going to tackle this double exposure. Uh, but before that, I'm going to close my window and you can take a peek at the current challenge channel on discord. Enjoy it. I'll be right back. Well, how was it? Did you enjoy looking at the Discord channel for a moment? Everybody needs a good break sometimes. Oh, right, we party in all the time. It's true, it's true. Balder, I see you type in, doing, doing the good work up in here. Hi from Sweden, what's up, Nick? Jordan, hello, Charles. All right, we jumping into Photoshop. Hold on to your Photoshop. Also, if you haven't updated Photoshop, you might want to do that. There was an update recently. I haven't done it yet because I'm scared to do it during the middle of a challenge, but maybe I should have more faith than that. Okay, so I didn't mention if you want to download the same files that I'm using, you can do that. Although I'm going to challenge you to maybe do a self portrait today. All you need is a picture of yourself. That's it. We can do the rest in Photoshop. So, but if you do want to work on what I'm working on to get your feet wet, you can go to get started here in the double exposure challenge and that will take you to some downloads. There's a template file. I'm not really going to be using it today. It's going to be, I'm going to be working on a file that's the same dimensions, uh, but it's just a six by four inch Photoshop document. Don't feel the need to download this unless you want to, and then you can jump in here and download 
My practice images. All right. So summer has been on my mind. I'm sure it's been on all of your minds, as well as many other things. Uh, but I wanted to do a double exposure that really kind of illustrated that idea. So this isn't a picture of me. I know, surprise, surprise. Uh, but we are going to create a double exposure effect by laying over some images of a palm tree, palm trees, on top of this portrait to create something like this. And this is literally done with two, two clicks, like two steps, so easy. And then we could even take it a step further, add a little summer gradient to it. I can imagine this like on a, on a t-shirt, very cool. This could be a really great social icon for you if you did your own self-portrait. Oh my gosh, perfect. Summer vibes. Do, 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 do. Or this is the leveled up version that maybe we'll get to at the end of this challenge if I don't take too long. Uh, you can make something that's a little bit more bespoke, a little more custom, and go for something like this. So this is using a lot of layer masks, as you can see over here, a lot of transformations. This is multiple clicks. This is not just two steps, but it's a simple workflow. It's really just laying images uh, on top of each other, using some layer masks to make sure they don't overlap each other, and then clipping them all to this portrait at the bottom so that they fit within her silhouette. So I will show you the super simple way first, and then we'll dive into the more complex one if we have time. I'll try and go fast. How many of you have done a double exposure in Photoshop before? Actually, how many of you have done a double exposure in your camera before? Ooh, that's how it was originally done. So it would be the photographer would take a photo and then instead of advancing the film, you would just take another snap on the same piece of film and that's a double exposure. Pretty easy. I'm not too young to have remembered those. Yeah, Jason, you like it? Super duper simple. Sean has done both. Nice, Sean. All right, so the very first thing we're gonna do is we're going to add our portrait image to our file again. This file is just a, if I go to inches, it should be four by six, but I might've made it a little bit bigger because of the resolution. <laughs> but you can just do a width of six inches, a height of four, and that'll give you a nice rectangle. You can place your image by going to file, place embedded, Ooh, Lindsay, you've done both and faked one in Photoshop and in InDesign. Interesting. So you will find your portrait image. Again, I really recommend that you try it with a self-portrait or maybe a portrait of a loved one. That would be such a nice gift. If someone made that for me, I'd be like, you spent time on me making me into a palm tree lady? Amazing. Go to place and then you can choose where you want your image to be. Now I sized mine down a little bit, so I grabbed one of the corners or one of the handles and placed it because I wanted it to really be one of those like uh, silhouettes or vignettes, cameo, that's what it's called. One of those old fashioned ones that you would put on the wall, like in your log cabin. This is like a, a 2020 cameo. Then we place it and we can get started. So I already have mine placed down here. It's gonna be at the bottom of your layer stack. And then you're gonna do the same place workflow for let me change this back to normal for your palm trees. So I just went to file, place, found my palm trees. There you go. Now it's gonna be really helpful if you uh, have an image that is on a lighter background, so darker subjects and a lighter background. That's gonna work really well for this if you want it to really look like it's um, really black and white and high contrast, but you can explore with different things. But we are just going to simply apply these palm trees to our portrait by changing the blend mode. Like I said, it's like, it's two clicks. It's crazy. So here are the blend modes. We've touched on this before, but they're found in your layers panel. And I love that Photoshop does this. You can get a live preview as you scroll and scrub through. This third group of blend modes is where you're gonna probably land for this workflow because these are going to allow um, the dark pixels to show your palm tree instead. So remember, right here on her hair is like where the darkest of this portrait is. And notice that when we turn our palms back on and jump into one of these groups, that's where our palm trees show through really well. 
So you can choose one. You, I liked uh, Lighten because it keeps the shadows darker than Screen does. Screen has a really nice kind of vintage faded effect though. There you go. We've got our double exposure. This is really awesome workflow because notice here on her hair, like we even have the palm trees getting into these little tiny baby hairs she has here. Oh, Darius, I'll show you how I added the gradient. Don't you worry. Uh, but I didn't have to do any layer masks or selecting. It did it for me just by choosing a blend mode. The only bad thing about this workflow is that it's kind of a plug and play. So you are kind of stuck with whatever your image is. Like you can't really warp the palm trees to bend with her hair. You can't choose what directions things go. You just have to get creative with your placement. One way to be creative with your placement is to use the move tool on your palm tree image and try and place it in a way that feels like it makes sense. So I might try and grab an area so that her mouth and nose and eye are gonna be covered and darker because if they're not, then it's hard to tell that that's a person. It's kind of a nuanced person, but I want those details to be there. So I want her eyes definitely and maybe move it over here so that we can see her nose and her mouth filling out nicely. I actually really like this placement because it's really fun right here. We know her hair's up here and then we get this nice kind of hair texture. Over here in her ponytail, it gets a little bit wonky because the direction of the palms are horizontal, but we know her ponytail's going down. So that starts to get a little bit interesting. We could warp and we could liquefy. Actually right here is pretty nice because we get a little bit of direction going on. It did all the work for me. It's awesome. But feel free to move it around and choose a placement that you like. Now, to add the gradient, we're just gonna do a gradient fill, which we have done when we worked on our adjustment layers. Uli, what's up? No worries. We're just working on some uh, double exposures. Chad, thanks. I'm glad you think it's a great challenge. It's a fun one, that's for sure. All right, so to do a gradient fill, you're just gonna come down here to your adjustment layers. We've played in this in this space many times over the last couple days. And we are just going to choose gradient at the top. All right, so if by default, mine just chose a white gradient. And I love this menu, especially because you can change the scale. I could decrease the size of my gradient. So it's a little bit more compacted. And I can also move my gradient if I just click in my workspace and drag it around. You can't do this in any of the other menus. It's specifically this first gradient fill one. So maybe I drag it down so it's a little bit faded from the bottom and then darker at the top. That's kind of cool. But we'll do a new one. Gradient. I'm going to open up my gradient drop down and find one that I like. So I initially did this. I think it was this one. No, I did this one. I love this live preview. Always love a live preview. It makes life so much easier. Yeah, Darius is excited. I'm showing the gradient. It's super simple, I promise. Here, you can play with the scale even more if you'd like to move it up and down if you want more orange or more pink. Let's do more orange. And click OK. All right, we're done. Just kidding. You know I'm kidding. So there's a couple of different ways that we could apply our gradient to our double exposure. One is to change the blend mode of the gradient so that it is only visible on our portrait. This is kind of cool. I like that. But we want to specifically apply it without just putting a blanket blend mode over everything. We're going to clip it to the layers below. So like I told you a couple days ago, my favorite way to add a clipping mask is to hover between the two layers to clip it to the layer below. Hover here, hold Option or Alt if you're on a PC and you'll see my cursor changes. I'm holding it, I let it go. I'm holding it, I let it go. So hold it, click, and now you'll see that the layer is clipped to the palm trees. Now we're also going to clip this layer to the one below it. Oh, whoops. That didn't work how I wanted it to. Oh, I think it's because this is screen. Hmm. Interesting. 
this worked when I did it before. How did I do that? I'm gonna undo and move back to before I messed everything up. There we go. Oh, I think it's because it was a uh, smart object. Hmm. The more you know. Very interesting. So I changed the gradient layer to screen as well. And I have my palms as a screen. I could play with it if I want to. We'll keep it as screen. And then we have our bottom layer. Okay, so we have just like a little bit of time left. Everyone's laughing at me. <laughs> A um, little bit of time left, so I will show you. Maybe I have to update my Photoshop. Good good call. Good call, Darius. A um, little bit of time left. So we will work on a more custom one just for a couple minutes. <laughs> I know, a nice bug. Very cool. Uh, just a couple minutes while we are finishing up the stream. Again, I'm not going to go through every single step of this because it's really one workflow I just repeated a bunch of times. We'll delete this. So I have, let me just turn off everything. I have my portrait layer, but what I did here is I made a mask out of her. See, I have a mask and it is in the shape of our portrait. The way that I did that was, let me, I'm gonna duplicate this and we'll do it on top. So I don't mess anything up. All right, I used my Selection tools, you can either do magic wand, quick selection, object selection, and let's try object selection and see how it does. Okay, it did a pretty good job, but her hair is where we're really gonna wanna get detailed with this. So come up here to the control bar and click select and mask, and we are going to use the amazing refine edge brush tool. That's this tool right here. The second one down in this left toolbar and if I zoom in, Command plus, Command plus, I can just click and scrub over her hair and it's gonna do an awesome job of masking those little tiny hairs out for me. And then when we exit this mode, you will see that we have a really fine selection. Okay, that should work pretty well. So down here at the bottom, we're gonna do output to new layer with layer mask. Click okay. And then I'll show you how well it did, hopefully. We'll fill this layer with another color and check it out. We have a really fine selection here. You can see the blue behind it. It's not perfect because I did it in like three and a half seconds. <laughs> if I included a little more time, then it would be even better. Okay. So now we have a really specific mask and we can bring in images individually to um, figure out where we wanna place them. So I'm gonna jump down to this one. First, I brought in a palm tree image. I changed the, uh, I didn't change the blending mode at all. I just clipped it to her. So she's being completely covered up and now we're just seeing the palm trees. So then there's a bunch of empty space where her ponytail is and the front of her face. So I brought in another one to fill in the bottom of her neck. Now, if I disable this, you'll see that there's like hard edges going on. I'm really just like pasting images on top of each other. And to get rid of this, I used a mask. So we're gonna enable that. To make a mask, you go down here to the bottom of your layers panel and you can paint with black to erase your layer, you're not really erasing it, it's still there because you can reveal it with white. So I used black to erase. I'm gonna switch to white by tapping X. I can bring it back. So I'm using a soft brush. Since these are all palms, you can layer things on top of each other and you don't have to worry about it being jarring to the eye. Like these are two different images, but since they're the same type of shapes, they're meshing really well together. That's one thing to think about. All right, I brought in some more palms to kind of fill out her ponytail. And here I'm seeing a little white shape. So I'm just gonna cover that with a new layer and just some dark gray brushing. That's right there. You'll notice it now that I showed you, but when you zoom out, you don't notice it. All right, let's add another one. So let's finish out her 
hair. So for this one, I didn't clip it to the original portrait because I wanted to add extra texture for her ponytail. So if I were to clip it, whoops, zoom back out. If I were to clip it, we wouldn't get any of these fun extra fronds, fun fronds, fun with fronds. Uh, so I didn't clip it, but all I did was I made a layer mask. I filled it all with black. So everything was, whoops, invisible. And then I used white to paint in where I wanted my fronds to be. Now you'll also notice that they are green, which is easily fixed with an adjustment layer which is black and white. So I just came down here to the adjustment layers, chose black and white, and then you can make some custom changes. So for example, I turned down the green and the yellow so that the darkness would match a little bit better with the rest. We'll delete that. And there we go. We have my kind of bespoke portrait. <laughs> Sig lost track of time this morning. Oh no. Any time spent with Adobe Live is good time spent. All right, Cynthia, if you want to learn about double exposure, you can start back at the beginning of the video and maybe follow along from there. Basically, we are combining multiple images. No starter file? We have starter files for sure. But like I said, I totally recommend you do your own portrait, self-portrait. All right, Bobby loves it. So that means we are good to go. We can stop for the day. I have a couple minutes left, so let's get this exported. We'll do a quick export, upload it onto Discord and see what y'all think. All right. Can you do a gradient now? Yeah. Let's see if it works for me <laughs> this time. We will go to gradient. Let's just choose this one. And since I haven't cleaned up my masks totally, you can see some of my mask brush marks, but I can just change my blend mode. There we go. Fun sunset gradient. You can still see some white brush marks down here. I just need to clean up my file a little bit. Those are just uh, pieces of the mask that I have not erased. All right, let's get on Discord. Oh, this is so cute by P40. Fly me to the moon. Super awesome digital collage using some illustrations. Love the different scales in here. We have the large assets in the foreground because they're closer to us and this little guy's tiny. One, because he's a mouse, but also because he's further away. Very nice. All right, let's get this uploaded. Really easy to upload your work to get feedback. Press this plus button at the bottom. We will go to day six. Here is my test image and I'll say, what do you think of a silhouette? I'm surprised I spelled that right. <laughs> Is it too busy? I almost spelled busy with a Z though. It's one of those days. <laughs> there you go. So the beautiful thing about Discord is you can give feedback, you can get feedback. I mentioned this yesterday, but if you get feedback from someone, return the favor, give some feedback. It's a good time. Alrighty, so this is not the last stream of Adobe Live. We had Jason uh, early this morning doing some awesome After Effects, I believe, clipping, or maybe it was Premiere, but either way, it was all about clipping, which was very cool. Clipping in motion, who would have thought? And then right before me was Howard unveiling some really cool updates for XD. Again, if you haven't updated your apps, do that. Maybe I'll do that right after this stream. I'm gonna hop over here. So right after me, Elise is coming back with Paul, and then Andrew is gonna be here for the Daily Creative Challenge for Illustrator. Uh, Julie will be back with Howard for some XD prototyping. And then at two, Andrea is gonna be working on, on her XD Daily Creative Challenge. So if you wanna learn Illustrator or XD, stick around for those. And then right after that is Doodle Therapy with Alice, which is going to be awesome. By the way, I'm sure you all know this, but 99U, the conference is happening tomorrow digitally, very exciting. So if you watch Adobe Live, you will be seeing that conference. Uh, the daily creative challenges are still gonna happen, but they're just gonna only be streamed on YouTube so that we don't interrupt the conference. 
Uh, so you can always watch us on YouTube, the Creative Cloud YouTube channel, or you can just watch the replays later. They will be available on the uh, starter or on the landing page. Okay, that's it for me. I'm out of here until tomorrow. Post your double exposures on Discord. Hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there and stick around for more Adobe Live right after me. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Bye.